is Prince, uh, and I'm a program here at the American Cinematheque. And on behalf of the American Cinematheque, I'd like to welcome you to the Max Kolevsky Arrow Theater for tonight's presentation of Black Swan and Pie. Uh, we have three great guests joining us in between the films. We have uh, director Darren Aronofsky here. As well as the great cinematographer Matthew Levitique. Um, how many people here have seen Pi? How many people here have seen Pi on the big screen? Okay, it's more than I thought. But it's an amazing film if you haven't seen it, and we have a fantastic print. So not only a lot of people first chance to see Pi, if you love Pi, I want to tell you haven't seen it on the big screen yet. So this is your chance to see Pi and see it on the big screen, and it's a beautiful print. I don't think it's ever been shown, is what our objection is said. So stick around, you have a whole great night, plus it's 84 minutes. You can spend 84 minutes flipping through the channels or just staring at your TiVo saying, why did I TiVo that? You could be doing that. Otherwise, spend 84 minutes here watching a great film on the big screen. Um, some things we have. 127 hours of Slumdog Millionaire is tomorrow night. Uh, there's about 80 tickets left. Um, we have the composer and the writer of both films here tomorrow. So please uh, join us for that. Uh, Wednesday, Gypsy Rose Lee. She would have turned 100 this year. Um, we are showing uh, that as a centennial. Uh, the great film Gypsy. And then uh, we start our Valentine's Day week. You get everything from The Princess Pride, The Notebook, to Gone with the Wind on the big screen. Uh, if you want to bring the one you love, you can come see Casablanca. If you uh, want to go by yourself, you can watch Double Indemnity, the second part of that. That would be like, shh, man, God, that's in trouble. So, um, also, I think we're gonna, we have Angelica Houston here later on this month. Exactly, it's amazing. I wrote for Princey's Honor, and we tracked down a print of the dead. Very hard to get. Do not miss it. Uh, we're about half sold. We will sell out. So if you want to get that, get that intermission tonight, because those will be gone. Uh, we were going to have a hat full of rain and have uh, uh, Don Murray here on that evening. But it has been canceled and moved because Ava Marie Saint will now be joining Don Murray, and that'll be in March. And on that date that we're going to have that, we are now showing The Fighter, and director David Russell will be here. So you're going to come see The Fighter, which is another great film, and David Russell will be here as well. Um, John Barry just passed away. We're doing a massive uh, retrospective of his work, which includes everything from Joe's James Bond scores to Midnight Cowboy to Out of Africa to Dances with Wolves to uh, Sands on a Wet Afternoon. Giant landscape of great films, uh, all of which should be seen on the big screen, so come check that out. Next month, we are doing Medium Cool with Robert Forster in person, as well as Haskell Wexler. Right on. So if you love cinematography and you're here to see Matthew Levitique, you will come back for that for sure. Sharon Stone will be here for Casino, which will be a great evening as well. So uh, those tickets aren't on sale yet, but they will be. That's just a sneak preview of what's about to happen. Uh, there's going to be no flash photography tonight, and uh, the Q&A will be in between. No texting. Some of you are like, I've already seen this film. I'm just going to text through the whole thing. No. No texting, no talking, nothing that's going to distract from the film. So let's all enjoy Black Swan and see you in Thank you. Welcome to the stage. First, I'm going to introduce uh, the Academy Award uh, nominated editor for the film. He's uh, done fantastic, Mr. Fox, Darjeeling Limited, and many other ones. Uh, Andrew uh, Weisblum, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> also joining us is the Academy Award nominated cinematographer. He's worked with everyone from Spike Lee to Jean Favreau to uh, Darren Aronofsky. He's done everything from Pi to Iron Man 2. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Lobanzi. film, but yet it's almost impossible to get made. It took, what, 10 years to make this uh, film or from the get-go. Can you talk a little bit about that journey of getting here? Well, we didn't actually actively try to make it, except for the last two years, but it was really hard. It was harder than, um, it was harder than any of the um, earlier ones in a lot of ways. Um, 
We think that after The Wrestler, when everyone was like, what the hell are you doing with your career? And then the film kind of turned out okay that they would trust us having, having a movie star and trying to do something a little sexy and, uh, and scary. But uh, it, was, it was really it was more difficult than raising money for The Wrestler. So, um, and I, I mean, four, we were just talking about about four weeks out, the, the money fell apart and uh, I literally was thinking about throwing in the towel, which I'd never had done before, but it was basically, it was the end. But I was scared of a 90 pound ballerina slash actress kicking my ass. So, <laughs> you know, Natalie had been training for a year, paying for it before herself, and I knew if I let her down, it would be bloody. So, um, so we tried one more try, and, and then, you know, we got it, got it together at the end. This question is uh, for all three. Um, it's so hard to catch just so little good baseball films. It's so hard to take another performance and put the, the energy of that into a film. And occasionally it happens with Raging Bulls, you had Schumacher and Chapman and Scorsese, all three coming together. Can you talk a little bit about how your language between the three of you, how you brought dance and gave us the same energy as though we were at a ballet for the entire film? Can you repeat the question? Want me to start So, um, I, I guess uh, the first thing you know we, we all talked about was getting the camera out of the audience because I think most of the time when you see ballet on PBS, you know the camera's back there or in the wings and that's about it. And uh, we knew that 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 wasn't going to happen in this movie. Um, and I, I think the thing I noticed first when I started doing the research was that you know when you watch ballet from the audience, it looks incredibly effortless because these athletes, you know, artists spend 20 years making things look impossibly easy. But what I was so impressed about backstage is that when they come off stage, they're out of breath, they're injured, they're bloody, they're sweaty, and all that effort is invisible from the audience. So I knew I, I needed to capture that. Um, and then I, I was, so, so from, from the beginning, I knew I had to get the camera on the stage. And then the idea of dancing with them, I think probably came out of the wrestling because we, sh we brought the camera into the ring for the first time. It, it had been done in boxing movies, but you know, wrestling was always, you know, when you watch it on TV, the camera's not in the ring. And so we knew we wanted to do something with it. And since it is like a dance um, wrestling, we, we, we choreographed the camera with the moves. And that same idea and approach uh, definitely informed how we were gonna do the ballet. <laughs> well, I mean, then, then, then it was connecting that to the reality that, you know, there's the dance part of her life at Lincoln Center, and then there was the home life, and the camera needed to be consistent. So, uh, we just, it was just the idea of subjective camera, which is apparent in all of Darren's films. And the camera's always connected to the, uh, the person you're supposed to be connecting with. So, you know, when you look at this film, you look at all the films, the camera's usually either in front or right behind, and uh, the POVs, are, are from the exact perspective of the person's face. So uh, using that as a guideline, it, it, that it was pretty apparent we're, just, we're gonna have to get in shape and move the camera around the dance part of it. But uh, you know, it's just it's the idea of subjective camera. Um, and continuing what you just said, it's like it, one of the rules of the film is that it's a completely subjective experience. And um, that I think informed the approach, not just the whole film, but to the dance sequences as well and not just with how it's shot and that you're engaged with the dancer and moving with them, but also that you're always conscious of her, her breathing when she's dancing and the efforts and, and the foley of, of, the, of the dance movement and the music moving around you all the time and all, just this immersion, um, which is, I think, unique in this film. And Natalie Portman had such a, I mean, it's such a, an intense role. She, not only is she having to act, there's a camera spinning around her, and then when she's not physically doing it, you're uptight and she's giving intense close-ups. Can you talk about working with her and how uh, it had to be 